By 2030, the future of advanced reactor systems promises exciting developments in the field of nuclear energy. Let's peer into this horizon, innovative designs, advanced reactor systems will continue to evolve, offering innovative designs that surpass current technologies. These designs include, small modular reactors SMRs, compact and versatile reactors that can be deployed in various settings, including remote locations. Molten salt reactors MSRs utilizing liquid fuel and coolant, MSRs operate at high temperatures and hold promise for efficiency and safety. High temperature gas reactors HTGRs, these reactors can withstand extreme temperatures and have applications beyond electricity generation. Let's discuss few of them one by one. The sodium-cooled fast reactor SFR uses liquid metal sodium as a coolant instead of water that is typically used in U.S. commercial power plants. This allows for the coolant to operate at higher temperatures and lower pressures than current reactors improving the efficiency and safety of the system. The SFR also uses a fast neutron spectrum, meaning that neutrons can cause fission without having to be slowed down first as they are in current reactors. This could allow SFRs to use both fissile material and spent fuel from current reactors to produce electricity. A sodium-cooled fast reactor is a fast neutron reactor cooled by liquid sodium. The initials SFR in particular refer to two generation reactor proposals, one based on existing liquid metal cooled reactor LMFR technology using mixed oxide fuel MOX, and one based on the metal fueled integral fast reactor. Sodium cooled fast reactors FRs are designed to operate on neutrons with a fast energy spectrum. Such reactors do not need a moderator to slow down neutrons but require more highly enriched fuel than water cooled reactors. Fast reactors can be used to produce or breed new fission isotopes, significantly enhancing fuel resources and enabling nuclear power to achieve long-term sustainability. Five sodium-cooled FRs are in operation. A common challenge in decommissioning sodium-cooled FRs is treatment of the coolant. Unlike in most other reactors, where the coolant is water, in these reactors the coolant is sodium-based, which has challenging chemical features. Other challenges include activated corrosion products in the sodium due to its chemical reactivity and the consequences of leakage during the operation of some reactors. The very high temperature reactor is cooled by flowing gas and is designed to operate at high temperatures that can produce electricity extremely efficiently. The high temperature gas could also be used in energy intensive processes that currently rely on fossil fuels, such as hydrogen production, desalination, district heating, petroleum refining, and ammonia production. Very high temperature reactors offer impressive safety features and can be easy to construct and affordable to maintain. The moderator used in HTGRs is graphite that acts also as a secure matrix enclosing the uranium fuel as well as the fission products. Helium, force-fed through the reactor core, is the coolant. Its pressure is 4 MPa and the peak temperature ranges between 700 degrees Celsius and 900 degrees Celsius. Helium may be supplied directly to a turbine in the Brayton cycle used in a steam generator to generate steam to drive a turbine or for the thermochemical production of hydrogen. The modern high-temperature gas-cooled reactor HTGR exhibits very high energy production efficiency around 40%. So far, there are only experimental HTGR reactors, operating in Germany, the USA, Great Britain, and China. The fuel is composed of coated fuel particles made of highly enriched uranium 93% in small spherical particles, 0.5 mm diameter, coated with silicone or carbon carbide and dispersed in a graphite pebble the size of a tennis ball. The fuel is freely loaded into the reactor and later removed from its bottom. Hexagonal blocks stacked on top of each other are used in the USA. VHTR offers two advantages to modern-day Generation 3 reactor designs. The high temperature of the coolant exiting the reactor core enables high thermal efficiency for electricity generation and can serve as process heat for hydrogen production. Molten salt reactors MSR use molten fluoride or chloride salts as a coolant. The coolant can flow over solid fuel like other reactors or fissile materials can be dissolved directly into the primary coolant so that the fission directly heats the salt. MSRs are designed to use less fuel and produce shorter-lived radioactive waste than other reactor types. They have the potential to significantly change the safety posture and economics of nuclear energy production by processing fuel online, removing waste products and adding fresh fuel without lengthy refueling outages. Their operation can be tailored for the efficient burn-up of plutonium and minor actinides, 
which could allow MSRs to consume waste from other reactors. The system can also be used for electricity or hydrogen production. A molten salt reactor MSR is a class of nuclear fission reactor in which the primary nuclear reactor coolant and or the fuel is a mixture of molten salt with a fissionable material. Two research MSRs operated in the United States in the mid-20th century. The 1950s aircraft reactor experiment R was primarily motivated by the technology's compact size, while the 1960s molten salt reactor experiment MSRE aimed to demonstrate a nuclear power plant using a thorium fuel cycle in a breeder reactor. Increased research into Generation 4 reactor designs renewed interest in the 21st century with multiple nations starting projects. As of May 2023, China had not announced the ignition of its TMSRLF-1 thorium unit following its scheduled date of February 2023. MSRs eliminate the nuclear meltdown scenario present in water-cooled reactors because the fuel mixture is kept in a molten state. The fuel mixture is designed to drain without pumping from the core to a containment vessel in emergency scenarios, where the fuel solidifies, quenching the reaction. BWX Technologies is developing a transportable microreactor that can thrive in off-grid applications and remote areas to produce 50 megawatts of thermal energy for deployment in the early 2030s. The high-temperature gas reactor uses a different form of DOE's trisofuel that contains a uranium nitrite fuel kernel for higher performance. The team will work with Idaho National Laboratory INL and Oak Ridge National Laboratory ORNL to test and qualify the fuel. They will also focus on optimizing new manufacturing technologies that could help cut the cost of microreactors in half and develop capabilities that could benefit other advanced reactor designs in the process. Westinghouse Electric Company is also pursuing a transportable microreactor that can be installed on site in less than 30 days. The 15-megawatt thermal reactor utilizes trisofuel and a specialized heat pipe design to flexibly operate on a grid or in remote locations. The company will work with Los Alamos National Laboratory, INL, and Texas A&M University to test and manufacture components for its heat pipe and moderator in order to develop a small demonstration unit. This short-term, two-year project supports a larger effort by Westinghouse to demonstrate a prototype reactor by 2024, with full commercial deployment targeted for the mid-to-late 2020s. The E. Vinci Microreactor's innovative design combines new technologies with 60-plus years of commercial nuclear design and engineering, creating a cost-competitive and resilient source of power with superior reliability and minimal maintenance. Its small size allows for transportability and rapid, on-site deployment in contrast to plants requiring large amounts of construction. E. Vinci can produce 5 MW with a 13 MWTH core design. The reactor core is designed to run for eight or more full power years before refueling. The heat pipes enable high temperature, passive heat transfer, eliminating the complexity of a forced flow reactor coolant system, so no pumps or valves are needed. The heat pipes passively transfer heat with high efficiency, eliminating the need for high pressure operation. Keros Power will work with ORNL, INL, the Electric Power Research Institute EPRI and the Moderion Corporation to deliver Hermes a scaled-down version of the company's KPFHR commercial reactor. The reactor uses a trisofuel pebble bed design with a liquid fluoride salt coolant to efficiently transfer heat from the fuel to produce power. The 140-megawatt electric commercial design will operate at lower temperatures than most advanced reactors and offers high availability with online refueling. Hermes is expected to be operational in 2026 and will be demonstrated in Oak Ridge, Tennessee. Holtec is partnering with Kiwit Power Constructors, Framatone, Mitsubishi Electric Power Products, Western Services Corporation and INL to complete the early-stage research and power plant development work needed to demonstrate its advanced light water small modular reactor. The 160-megawatt electric design can be adapted to use air-cooled condensers on its secondary side, allowing it to be deployed in the most arid regions of the world. Holtec has excellent manufacturing capabilities and can fabricate the majority of the components right here in the United States. They plan to demonstrate the reactor at the Oyster Creek site in New Jersey, following the decommissioning of that nuclear power plant. Holtec SMR-160 The Holtec SMR-160 will generate 160 MWe. Like the new scale, it is designed for passive cooling of the primary system during both normal and accident conditions. However, the modules would be much taller than the new scale modules and would not be submerged in a pool of water. 
Each reactor vessel would be located deep underground, with a large inventory of water above it that could be used to provide a passive heatsink for cooling the core in the event of an accident. Each containment building would be surrounded by an additional enclosure for safety, and the space between the two structures would be filled with water. Unlike the other IPWRs, the SMR-160 steam generators are not internal to the reactor vessel. The reactor system is tall and narrow to maximize the rate of natural convective flow, which is low in other passive designs. Holtec has not made precise dimensions available, but the reactor vessel is approximately 100 feet tall, and the above-ground portion of the containment is about 100 feet tall and 50 feet in diameter. For these and other SMRs, it is important to note that only limited information is available about the design, as well as about safety and security. A vast amount of information is considered commercially sensitive or security-related and is being withheld from the public. Southern Company is looking to build and operate a small reactor experiment based on TerraPower's Molten Chloride Fast Reactor MCFR technology. The MCFR can be scaled up for commercial use on the grid and could flexibly operate on multiple fuels, including used nuclear fuel from other reactors. Southern Company will work with TerraPower, CorePower, Orano and EPRI, in addition to other private companies, labs and universities, to build the world's first fast-spectrum salt reactor. MCFR technology transfers heat with incredible efficiency and can be utilized for thermal storage, process heat or electricity production. The molten chloride reactor experiment will inform the design, license and operation of a demonstration reactor and is expected to be operational within the next five years. Molten salt reactors MSRs or nuclear power plants exist to produce a lot of electricity in a predictable and reliable way, without causing CO2 emissions while taking up little space. The combination of these qualities make them very useful additions to wind and solar in the goal of creating a CO2 neutral world. MSRs are developed to improve on existing nuclear power plants. MSRs can make nuclear energy cheaper and cleaner, and they will be used in ways that ordinary reactors cannot be used, for instance to supply heat directly to industries like the chemical or steel industry, or even the fabrication of solar cells.